Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, Taylor ends up being a monkey. Luke's gonna spot him, maybe. But today, we're doing a transmission flop. So we're gonna go from six HP to an eight HP. So stay tuned and we'll get at it. So we're back in the garage with our buddies, uh, Ryan, Luke, and Taylor, of course, because we're working on his E92 today with the uh, famous N54 engine. Now, a few things to note is that the six speed to eight speed swap really isn't all that hard and it actually brings quite a bit of value to the vehicle itself. Now, other than the obvious adding two gears, it's actually gonna make shift time significantly quicker going to hold a bunch more torque and uh, it is also going to be supported with XHP. So now we're going to go over what's in the box from Can TCU and show you what we're working with. What we have is the version 2 of the Campformance controller. It's a little bit different. He made it a little bit slimmer. There's some uh, mounting brackets as well as plug and play connectors that are all OEM. So this will be where the USB goes for if you need to do anything connected to the Canformance to the computer through the Canformance programs. And then as a new option that he's added, you can actually do full plug and play harnessing. So what Ken has done, he's already pre-pinned and pre-lubed everything to make life a lot easier, all the way down to the connector that'll go into the DME there. Everything's already wired lengthwise specific to what application you're gonna be putting it into. And then he did leave the other ones blank just because when you want to run them through the transmission tunnel, you're not going to be able to fit the connectors. Uh, if you're like me and you absolutely hate wiring, Ken makes it unbelievably simple with wiring diagrams that go perfectly in place with each pins. Other than that, we are going to run a DCT shifter. So a factory shifter out of a uh, six series, but really any F chassis works. And then we have uh, his mounting plate there and then straight down to the connectors as well. So he'll send different connectors per the application that you're going to be using it from, and then their factory BMW as well, just to keep the quality up. So we are running the Domiworks 8HP oil cooler adapter. Uh, so the, the only company, if you're going to be putting it in 8HP 45, they're one of the only companies that make it for a 45. A lot of companies make it for the 70s, but not so much the 45. When you look into it, there's four different revisions or three different revisions of the 8HP 45 uh, that'll use different sizing for the connectors. But you can always reach out to them. They're super, super helpful on what application you need based off of what vehicle you pulled the transmission out of for the donor. And then from from that, we are going to be running 8 AM line uh, all the way from the transmission into a cooler that sits in the front bumper. So we've added an aftermarket cooler. Uh, one thing with the 8 HP 45 is if you already have a cooler, we're probably going to have to block half of this one off. The 8 HP 45 runs way cooler than the 6 HP, so you'll probably end up with overcooling issues. So one thing, one thing you can do if uh, if you're running into uh, overcooling issues, install a thermostat. Which in that bag, there's a thermostat sit there. Like, subscribe, give Tony your comments and feedback. Thanks, Taylor. All right, let's get back to it. Of course, no project starts off flawless, but uh, here we are. We end up finding a bit of a surprise. <laughs> Why is this every time there's a BMW to work on, there's tools stuck to it? What? <laughs> I guess I am lucky I find everything. Oh, they are mine too. <laughs> what what happened, doing? Tony? Were you trying to tighten up the shocks or something? Yeah, it's probably this. Is that mine? Oh, this is not mine. Hey, mine. It's been there on a while, there for a while. That's oh, for has sure. anybody done shocks here? Or yeah, we didn't. No, it has a blue it. handle on it. That's not mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got some. All right, let's take a with gorilla hands. Let's see. Oh, those ain't mine. God, there's really mine not that much red. space on these cars, eh? I think I want to take the drive shaft out, the heat shields, too, the exhaust, the heat shields. Yeah, it won't be that bad. No. So the first things we start with removing are the under trays under the vehicle so we get better access to all the nuts and bolts that we need to remove. The first thing we start to loosen is the four nuts and bolts that are holding the exhaust to the downpipe. Once we do that, we remove both rear O2 sensors from the clips and from the bracket itself. After that, we're gonna lower Taylor's exhaust. It's a little bit easier than the factory one as it's just a single exhaust that's being converted. Hey. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. Look at this. Big old Look how much hey. weight that is. Yeah, that's a lot. So after we lower the exhaust, we're going to get better access to the heat shields. So once you end up removing the heat shields with the 8mm head bolt, it gives us better access to the drive shaft and to the gibo bushing at the front. The gibo bushing, of course, is also known as the flex disc. What the hell? It looks like this uh, what? transfer case has an actuator on it. Yeah. This is not an old-time all-wheel drive transfer case. I bet you it's uh, biased on rear-wheel drive. Yeah. And whenever you punch it, 
This this uh, solenoid will actually push the clutches together. Yeah. To engage the front. That makes sense. Well, it would push the clutches together to send it through the drive shaft then. Yeah, full send. Sure. All right, so first things first, you want to disconnect the rear O2 sensors. So these will be in the bottom portion of the exhaust. So one will be longer than the other. Pretty straightforward, just let them dangle. Four bolts and nuts right on this one for the rear portion of the exhaust. Now to lower it, what you're going to want to do is on an all-wheel drive, you're going to have one bolt here, one bolt on the other side right over here, and eight bolts right in the center that you need to lower. So these ones are torque heads. So once you lower that mount, there's going to be heat shield underneath. So once you end up removing that heat shield, it's going to expose the drive shaft. Now once the drive shaft is exposed, you're going to see this really big nut on the back of it. You don't need to bust it. <laughs> okay, so this nut on the back here, you don't need to touch anything because this is a pain in the ass and it's torqued really, really, really high. So this nut, you don't need to bust. But what bust you're going to do... So what you're going to do is you're going to actually bust these two nuts. So when you bust these two nuts, these are going to be 13 mil, I believe. Yes, Luke, 13 mil? 13 millimeter. Perfect. So 13 mil for the center support bearing. I think they call it a carrier bearing, support bearing. And then yep. you're going to lower this so that once you take those nuts off. There's three of them, 16 millimeter heads. Perfect. So once you lower that, you'll be able to compress the drive shaft enough to hold it down out of the way. We'll probably bungee it to the side of the lift there. But the biggest thing you want to do on the side of this is get a paint pen and mark the heads of the bolts that are facing towards the drive shaft and mark the orientation of the Ebo bushing or flex disc. Now this one looks okay. So we're just going to mark it, make sure the orientation is the same when we go to put it back together. Go from there. Is there a neutral disconnect on this side? There should be. Up on the side. Yeah, I should be yeah. a neutral disconnect. If you take the linkage out, you can slide it over to neutral. It's usually on the, it's on the left side of the ZF. You just have like a little lever. Wow, that one doesn't have it. No, that's, oh, that's okay. not that one does. I think it's higher up. It's this as well. It usually doesn't have a lever on them. Why don't I just take the seat shield off and out of your way? Yeah, why don't you do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do that. Yeah. Ah! Okay. It's just a rubber grommet that holds it. Probably the other way. I didn't think it was. Oh. Boom. There. Oh, I guess it is. But it probably won't turn because it's perfect. Oh, you have the e-brake on? Yeah. Somebody wants to rip the rest of that off, I guess. <laughs> all, I was, all I did was, all I did oh, was, oh, sorry. <laughs> now it's all sharp. It wasn't actually bolted. It was broken, broken on here. What the hell what the f are you doing, bruh? Take the f***ing e-brake off. Parkour. All right, e-brake's off. Yeah, we can leave it like that. Wow. Where's that? So after Taylor climbed into the vehicle to release the e-brake, we were able to spin the drive shaft so that we had better access to the bolts holding the flex disc to the back of the transmission. Why can't I get it in the hole? There's a reason you don't have kids. Yeah. <laughs> you hear I'll try and get a bungee or something. Sure. Wait for that to slip out of your hand and just bam! Right, right between the eyes. Bam, bam, bam. Reverse, boom, boom. Reverse torques. Yeah, it's e-torques. E-torques. Oh, E E15 or something? Yeah, he's got some strength behind him. Strength. Yeah. Is that what <laughs> Why are you Gen Z tight? is calling? <laughs> okay, so while Taylor works on the front of the drive shaft, we pulled the back of the drive shaft off with just some E-Torx. Same thing, flange in here, E12. Make a line just so this goes back on the same way. And any sees everything, so it doesn't give you an issue when you decide to pull the transmission for, what is this, third time? Fourth time? I think this is only the second time. Oh, Taylor likes to pull trainees. Hey, it's a general neutral shift box. <laughs> These kind of have Loctite on them. Yeah, they have to. But those ones didn't. They used to. You can actually see it. It's like the little teal stuff. And they were off before. Yeah. They're also a torque to yield. They are on Land Rovers and we use the same garbage. So. I like how you call oh. it the same garbage. No, 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 no. You behave. All right, Taylor, what are we looking at? Uh, I can't really see it. So once you remove the front drive shaft on an all-wheel? Oh, that's a 13 mil bolt that came out of there. Yeah, which bolts the transfer those on. Okay, so you basically bar. would use a pry bar to pry those out. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the 13 mil bolt out of there for the transmission cooler lines. What you're going to want to do first is on the back side of this. Yeah. So the fill plug, you're going to use an Allen head. You're going to loosen that off. A little bit of fluid's going to come out, but you're also going to loosen the one on the bottom of the transmission pan. So take the majority of the fluid out. For here, when you pull the lines off, tip them down. Some will come out, but in the lines up here, 
it's going to remain. So you don't need to worry about that. Tip them down, let it drip out. You can hold them down with a zip tie. And once they're dripped, just zip tie it up and away. It should be good. So if you decide not to drain the transmission fluid, just be a little bit careful when you lower the transmission itself so that the torque converter doesn't slip off the input shaft. I believe the torque converter holds somewhere around six, seven quarts, so it could end up being a bit of a mess if it ends up coming off. Now, moving to the front of the vehicle, Ryan is turning the crankshaft so that we can look through the inspection hole to turn out the flex plate bolts. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate the engine manually just with the crankshaft. We use seven eighths or a 22 millimeter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate it and there's gonna be six of those bolts onto the flex plate. And once you take the six of those out, then the flex plate is not gonna be attached to the torque converter anymore. You turn it, you take the bolts out, and then you can lower the transmission off of it. Yeah, uh, actually another thing, just to kind of uh, make things easier for you, you can actually go in this hole and push the torque converter usually off. Oh Did yeah, you see? it's actually Yeah, so you want to push that off. So, you, so the torque converter goes inside the transmission. Yeah. That's another way, way of telling if you got all the bolts off of the, tor off, off of the torque converter and the flex plate. And also it's actually easier to take the transmission off the uh, engine. Nice. So yeah, it really wasn't that bad actually. No. So just the six bolts. What no. what socket did we use on that one? I believe they were six. I think it was a 16. 16 mil, I believe. Let's see here. 17, 17. mil. Okay, so 17 mil gets those torque converter bolts off. And just put them to the side. Obviously, we'll replace yeah. it and we'll torque the spec. And uh, another thing is with these torque converter bolts, put blue Loctite on the threads because they will come loose just because of the engine and transmission vibrations. There are always minuscule vibrations. Always recommend to put Loctite on those things because when, when, uh, when the bolt flies off, it can do real damage inside the case. You know, and you don't want that. So it really wasn't that bad. So far, so good. Yeah. I think really, what's left? I guess we just pull the transmission down. Uh, the one, the one thing that's left is uh, we can drain uh, the transmission oil just so it's a little bit lighter to take out, and we're not making a mess. Okay. Uh, oil cooler lines. Okay. Uh, then we gotta support the transmissions. Take the uh, the transmission mount off right here. There's yep. three. There's three bolts on passenger side. Three bolts on the driver's side. Perfect. And the one connection here, right to the... Yeah. And then there's your PTU connector. You can take that off. Okay. And there's going to be a, also a... Mechatronic one. The, the mecha mechatronic one. Oh, uh, let me see if I can try and see. It should, be, it should be up there, right there. And then the mechatronic connector right up there. And guys, don't forget to disconnect your emergency park release. This needs to be disconnected. Yeah, and that's just a rubber slip on to the little. Yeah, you can just pry. You can just pry it right off. And, and then, uh, when in doubt, you're always going to be having exhaust leaks. And if you didn't want an exhaust leak, buy a Camry. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's about right. Or a Mustang. Two Beamer guys, two Mustang guys. Between the four of us, <laughs> our self-respect is about equal. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if you haven't changed your transmission fluid in a while, be prepared. It's going to stink. Hang on. Let me. <laughs> Does it smell cooked? It's still red actually, which is nice. What we're doing now is we're uh, just letting the tranny colorize, drain. There's no metal, which is good. Are those pretty, oh yeah, they're probably rigid. Yeah, they probably are. Probably bolted they're up bolted there. up. Yeah. They're bolted up right up there. You yeah. can see it. You can always pull it down just a hair. Transmission on, it's probably going to be pretty easy to actually get that just whole hard that, line out. Let that drip for a bit and then uh, We'll try and maybe and cap them off. Do we have any caps? Just get a just get a hose and loop it. Yeah. So after the transmission fluid's been drained, you can start by removing the rear brace on the back of the transmission. Now, once we ended up lowering it, it didn't end up moving too too far until the bell housing actually rested on the subframe. So if you didn't want to do that, you can always put a jack just underneath the transmission itself to keep it in place. So oil level sensor will just disconnect quick. Yeah. Where is it? Uh, I'll grab it. It's way up front. It's in the harness itself? Yeah. Okay. Right here. So Taylor jumped back into the driver's seat and he started by removing the factory shifter, including the linkage itself. Now the factory six speed in the E92 is a manual shift transmission. We're converting it to an electric shift transmission being on the eight speed. So when you hear M shift and E shift, it signifies manual and electric. Wait a minute, guys. Guys, 
Huh? Can you see where my hand is? What are you guys doing? Shut the f up. <laughs> that was aggressive. <laughs> They're still pulling. No, no. Oh, what the? F Where's this? Hand? <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> Afterwards, Taylor's gonna start by installing the plate and the shifter itself. I get the top bolts out first. Yeah, I think that'd be better. And then um, put the tranny jack under here. And then take, the, the, take the side ones. Once. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see the two right there, right on that bracket. Yeah. And then, yeah, third one. Cause there's gonna be those two up top that are gonna be a to get to. I mean, yeah, I, you, I guess if you, right from the back here, I think right from the side, you should be able yeah. to get one. Yeah, that's why, that's why we got the long extensions. Oh, is it? <laughs> Ryan, Ryan's head just perfectly fits into the tunnel. <laughs> Sorry, I moved this out of the way. Where's, yeah. the, where's the light? <laughs> here you go. <laughs> I can see that starter one from right here. Oh, okay. Cool. That thing just broke. <laughs> yeah, that impact is not forgiving. Oh, yeah, pin just came out. Did the pin literally, literally wiggle out? Yeah. It's because it's on the impact, mm. that's what happens if it bends it. Where's the uh, ratchet, the three right eighths ratchet? There's three eighths. Three okay. eighths and a half. We tried using the swivel joint to get the bolts out, but of course it ended up moving too much and the bolt ended up coming right out to the center of it because the impact's a little bit too strong for it. So what we ended up doing is we're gonna use long extensions that have the slightest little bit of wobble right on the front of it or right on the tip of the extension. So the longer the extension, the shorter the angle to actually get onto the bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the longest extension we can and then just a ratchet to crack the bolts free. That way we're not gonna end up shock loading the knuckle when we go to remove the bolts. Why? as far as my arm goes. <laughs> my wrist. <laughs> Is that gonna be wide enough for the pan? Ah, it'll be fine. It goes wider if needed. Yeah. Oh, sh Never mind. <laughs> Getting tired already? <laughs> no. Switching positions, man. Ah. Gotta keep it interesting. Yeah. Are we on that side? Good. Oh, yeah. There you Look go. at that. Okay. So now you just take the bolts out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where's the Milwaukee? The right angle. Perfect. That bolt's the bottom one on the left hand side? It's the. Yeah, yeah. That's the one on the ball on the bottom, bottom right. Get out. Top one on the right. Oh. I'll hold it just in case. Ooh. Yeah, she's loose. Hey, that Taylor. bracket there that it's holding, we don't have to put back. Okay. No, a lot of these brackets are. Yeah, that's for holding the rear inlet, so that doesn't have to go back. All right. So well, it's ready to go. Okay, one second. There's a bit of a wiggle. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, let me know what's going on. No, it's going to have to go up. Uh, just be careful when you're pulling it down. There's wires attached to it that need to... I've already detached them. These ones? Like the, when you talk about the mechatronic harness. Or these ones? Yeah, I already unclipped it. Oh, for a second. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. This thing, I think, is going to have to come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go up just a little bit. Hang on, because the torque converter is back, so I mean... You still got about that much to pull out. Yeah. Okay. Get a lower the back. Yeah. I think it's ready to go. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. are we clear on the yeah. front inverter? Clear. Yeah. Okay. Straight down. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, this pose is a huge issue. Might have to tilt it. Yeah. <laughs> or, or lift the car slightly. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to lift the car. Oh, okay. Keep going. Yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. So be yeah, careful when you're pulling that so it doesn't slide off of that. There, just pull it on here. Uh, we're going to have to lift this thing up and somebody just pull the fucking training I'll, jack I'll out, pull of the way. out of the way. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. That's it. Good. I got it. 
Now kick it. Right the way. Okay, so you guys can see when you end up dropping the transmission, the starter stays in there. So my understanding is it's sitting on a dowel. So do a quick inspection. Usually you'd look through here to see if there's any leaks from the rear main. So far it looks good. So after removing the transmission, we lowered the vehicle and Taylor jumped into the engine bay for us to start wiring of the CAN TCU system. Okay, so once you end up taking the harness out from the opposite side, you'll end up having this whole contraption. You'll see the original mechatronic connector and then it goes all the way down. Now what we did, and you can live vicariously through us or well, we kind of learned the hard way, is that we cut the connector. So there was two sets. So there's a set here, which are the grounds. So you're not gonna be able to see it on camera, but these grounds here, they go to one butt connector. So it ends up crimping all the grounds. And this goes to the one ground point there. So that remains and you cut these out. So in turn, in the DME box, what you do is where you have it cut off, you'll see a couple of zip ties and a couple of loops of fabric tape. So you just cut it and they go to these two connectors here. So you see the blue one and the black one. So this pigtail, throw to the side. This one here, throw to the side. Because on the new one, you have the one connector here. So because it's going to end up having a separate ECU, you only have the one connector. And as you can see, the big chunky power wire, this connects here. And this one here, you literally ignore. So this one you can kind of tuck into the side. For this one, dielectric grease, clip it in. But of course, we're gonna run it nice in the DME box. We're gonna run it through the weather pack connector. So with removing the rest of it, you can see where we cut the slit through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a little bit of a portion here, tuck the wire harness just inside after it's all sorted and we clean up the DME box, clean that up. And because it has this connector, it'll be nice and watertight. So we'll get this all put back. And then the harness here, you have the one ground and then this goes down to the transmission. So again, you have the new Mechatronic that has less pins in here. The original one had, I think, 14, and this one only has seven. So this one will go to the shifter. This one goes to the Ken Formance box. So of course, the two of these, because you have to run it through, we'll turn the connectors after, and this one goes to the OBD. So we'll get it all tidied up and show you what it looks like after. All right, so what we did is right over here, we ended up routing the harness up and over, we have it tucked in behind the evap line. Now the mechatronic will connect roughly around here in relation to where the factory shifter hole used to be. There's a tiny little hole just above it. You can see the light right there. So Taylor's gonna end up routing the wires through that and push enough of a bundle up there where you could just grab it and end up pulling it into the cabin. Yep, and that'll loop over the top of the transmission and mechatronic. So we're going to end up terming it and throw the transmission in. So all we did was we took the 8HP shifter connector that uh, Ken had set up, took the factory OEM connector that he had shipped with the plug and play kit, wired the harness to match the schematics he gave us, and then we'll just be clipping it into the shifter right here. Clicks in like factory, now we can put this in its final resting home. All these are kind of just, they'll end up being useless for now, so. Don't cut them, just leave them. Tuck them under the shifter to surround, it'll be fine. I guess now you pull, you uh, do the OBD2 connector, and then, so the ECU itself, so that OBD2 connector, are they expecting it to be there? Or are you supposed to put this wiring in back there? It's kind of up to where you want to put it. Um, it's really easy to run it through here and under into the glove box. I'd probably do that and leave the little computer inside here. <laughs> yeah. So the computer, you can tuck under the dash somewhere or hide it wherever. And then the cable can be in the glove box. So now that we have the electrical wiring completed, we're going to move on to building two transmission cooler lines. Taylor's E92 has an upgraded side mount oil cooler. So we need to adapt it to the eight speed. Hey, this is conveniently here. DeWalt product, but I won't judge. What we did is we put some electrical tape around here, put it in a vise, and when we cut it, we just happen to use a sawzall this time. When you cut it, it doesn't end up fraying 
So now you can clean up the edges because you'll always have a little bit of strands. Again, use the Sawzall. Typically use a grinder, so this will be nice and smooth and the tape will allow you to push on the fitting. So what I tend to do is I loop this up a little bit just so it goes into the hose a little bit easier. That doesn't sound right. So much nicer. All right, so same thing. Oh, I was gonna say give it a little spritz. That was a little bit more than a little spritz. Just gonna put your purse down and be a man. Don't get me wrong, some days I like Epsom salt baths and walks in the park. Yeah, actually that was a bit too easy. Ring of electro tape if you wanna. Let's put a ring at the bottom so we'll see if it pushes out because then the electro tape will, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Here, cut towards your chum. Literally towards you. So be prepared. Like there's a lot of people that are super antsy about, I don't want my fitting scratched. This is gonna sit in a transmission tunnel where you're never ever going to see it. Exactly. So we still need a 5 8 wrench. 7 8 right here. Or 7 8 yeah, Push it down just a hair. I think that's just pretty. Normal. Yeah, well, pushing down is whatever. It's pushing up is the issue, right? No, no, the electrical tape, just a hair, oh. but it has to displace a little bit. We have a transmission line. Here, just flush it out with brake clean. So spritz brake clean in here. Yes? It's peeing. All it needs to do. And then just go hang it on something so it can drip all the way out. So that was one of the four fittings. So the other three are gonna be pretty straightforward. Just follow the same procedure and it'll be pretty easy. Now, reinstalling the lines, there's many different ways and routes that you could end up running them, whether you remove the factory lines or if this even applies to you. So we didn't end up filming it because a lot of people will just use the factory cooler. Now we'll start with the reinstallation of the 8HP transmission. What do you guys say, an hour and it's in? Huh? An hour and it's in? I don't know, why? Are you gonna rush us and jinx us? No, but I need to give Ken a uh, heads up. So now we're gonna put the eight speed on the transmission jack. Because of the jack we ended up using, we have to lift it three, four feet in the air. So be a little bit careful. Lift with your knees, not your back, and get it on the stand. <laughs> so this is gonna end up being the tricky part. When you end up lifting the transmission on the jack, there's gonna be a fine line between tipping it left to right and up and down. So take your time, go a bit slow. You wanna ensure that it ends up locating on the two dowels before you put any bolts in. So as soon as it rests on the two dowels, you can put two bolts in and slowly work them in to pull the transmission so that the bell housing mates to the back of the block. So when replacing the bell housing bolts, you need to be cautious because some years ended up having aluminum bolts, which are stretch one-time bolts, as opposed to the steel bolts that were actually on Taylor's E92. We can only guess that they were replaced once upon a time with the revised part when the transmission was swapped sometime before. The bolts themselves are visually different in size. For the side bolts, uh, they're, these are E12s, the E-Torx 12. The two bottom ones right here, and then there's gonna be one on your left side, the, 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 the most bottom left, is gonna be an E10. They actually hold a bracket that we're not gonna be putting back on for these, uh, for the O2 sensor and for the uh, engine oil level harness. Which of course the rear O2s doesn't matter because they're deleted in the single anyway, so. Yeah. Oh, really? Wait, what? You don't have? He has the sensors in. It sits in there as a dummy. So why don't you just cut them short and use them as stubs? Because it gives me a check mistake. engine light. So same with removing the bolts. Try to use as long of an extension as you can to minimize the angle to put the bolts in. What we ended up doing was putting a ring of electrical tape on the knuckle itself so that it limited how much it would end up flexing. Now, a trick that I always recommend is for the open end of the socket, put a piece of paper towel inside so that it holds the bolt in place. It'll make it a lot easier for you to actually get it into the bolt hole to tighten it down. Thank you. Is this even the right socket for this thing? Okay, if you have a proper socket, this will work. If you don't, smack your apprentice. 
So what we did to give us better access to the top bolts on the bell housing that are hidden in behind the firewall is we lifted the front of the engine just a little bit to put a block of wood between the oil pan and the subframe itself. It gave us a few degrees, but it was enough to get easier access. Now, just before bolting the transmission in place, reach up and connect the mechatronic sleeve. Other than that, once the transmission was completely bolted in, we lowered the vehicle so that Taylor could remote in with Ken from Ken TCU and to program the transmission control unit module. Smoke it. Okay, so I guess we should kind of explain really quick why we did this. So because we put the 6 HP torque converter on the back of the 8 speed because it's operated differently, there was a bracket that was interfering with the oil pan. So we're not going to pull the transmission down again. So Luke and the rest of us, we decided we were just going to cut it off because you really don't need it. Exhaust is supported with enough hangers. So it really wasn't needed. All it ended up doing was just holding the exhaust for the most part. As Luke takes those bolts out, I'm gonna walk over to the other one to show you what we did. So again, this one is the eight speed with the six speed transfer case. So this one is working off, what is this, CAN bus? So yeah, so the earlier BMWs, I guess, they were, they only had the powertrain, which is the, which is the engine control module and the transmission control module. They were all ran off of CAN bus, probably, I'm going to say uh, the, the, the HS, the high-speed CAN bus. And the new one has even a higher speed uh, networking called FlexRay. So it's a completely different protocol. It's much faster. And yeah, and if you actually switch the transfer cases around, it will actually not work because it will not recognize the, it will not recognize the coding. Yep. So, okay, so I'll just head over here. So the one that we took off is this one, now this is off the eight speed. Now they look very similar, but the back is what we're looking at. So right over here is the different type of system. So you called it flex ray? Yes. So this is the flex ray system, according to Luke. That's the way he explains it. Uh -huh. And on the back of this one is technically the older one, which is- The high speed CAN bus. High speed CAN bus. HS CAN. That is the biggest difference. And again, that's why we needed to cut off the bracket. We swapped the transfer cases on the ground. Didn't really see that bracket. It wasn't really interfering with anything at the time. No. Until we got it up and he <laughs> got it up and bolted it up. And then it's like, oh, well, we need to change this filter, which is part of the pan on the ZFs. And it's like, oh, well, we can't really do that because there's brackets in the way. Yep. So don't do what we did, kids. Yeah, learn from our experience. Yeah, live, learn from, learn from live our- Live vicariously through this video. Yeah. As we start to button everything up, Taylor starts by tightening the three bolts on the flex disc that connects to the drive shaft. Lift the center support bearing and reinstall the 13 mil bolts that are holding it into place. Afterwards, he begins by reinstalling the heat shields. All right, Luke, what are you doing? Power converter bolts. Power converter bolts. Um, hey guys. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What about it? Uh, Did you guys loosen those? No. Did, yes, you, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You know how I know? How? Because you took the exhaust bracket off. Oh, okay, but what about the no nut on this side? Because somebody put the nut on here. Because this was an aftermarket bracket. Somebody they just put a nut on the back for the hanger for the yeah. exhaust. You don't put a nut on no, this? No, because no, the threaded. diff is threaded. Oh. They just, they just put the nut on here. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank Brain you. sales gone. <laughs> Well, oh, brain cells had to be, that. yeah, they had to be there to leave. So when you get ready to reinstall the bolts to the flex place that actually hold the torque converter in place, the easiest way is to slowly turn it by hand after you pry with the pry bar to set it right against the flex plate itself. You may need to turn the engine clockwise ever so slightly just so the bolt holes line up. After you get one in, you can loosely tighten it and then turn it 360 degrees in a clockwise rotation so that you can actually put each bolt back into place. Once you have all six bolts in place, begin by torquing each one in a second rotation. Yeah, turning the crank, turning, turning, turning. So you can put these little guys in for the torque converter. Torque converter flex play bolts. Torque to spec. Not much torque on those, so don't have to overdo them. 
I mean, I can guarantee you they're probably tighter now than they were before, so. Yep, they probably are. Right. Do you have the... Uh, dust cover? Yeah, the dust covers, yeah. It's on the bench. Are you already... You got all of them done? Yes. Jesus. Don't forget these. If you have one still. All the inspection covers here. Yep. There we go. Good as new, boys. Good as new. Now we're going to reinstall the front drive shaft. Just be sure to put them loosely in as you rotate it 360 degrees and on the second pass, snug them down just to ensure that the flange is flat against the unit itself. Here Luke's removing the original transmission pan that had a big crack in it. Of course, it does have an integrated filter, so we're going to be replacing with a brand new OEM one regardless. As opposed to the 6HP, the 8HP bolts end up bottoming out, so you don't need to worry about them going in a crisscross pattern. Just tighten them, one opposing the other, and go around snugging them down. It didn't end up showing us connecting the connectors, but just before you go to install the transmission and put it up into place, you have more than enough room to put the mechatronic connector on. The rest end up going through the transmission tunnel and into the cabin. Here Taylor's adding some Licomoly ATF 8100 fluid, just for the first start. Because we replaced the transmission lines with brand new ones, we're gonna snug them up before we fill the transmission and start it for the first time. After the initial start, Taylor is up inside the vehicle as I start to put fluid inside the transmission itself. BMW's procedure accounts for the transmission being at 40 degrees Celsius and no hotter than 50 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, it would consider it to be too hot for you to check the appropriate fluid level. We began at 20 degrees Celsius. This would yield for us to put an additional 500 milliliters of fluid into the transmission itself. From my experience prior, whenever you end up filling it per BMW's procedure, it always ends up being a little bit lower than it really needed to be. So overfilling it tends to be the sweet spot. All right, so as you can see, the car is on the ground now. So we ended up finishing it up. We ended up following the BMW bleed procedure for the eight speed here. Um, when it was on the lift, we can't go through all of the gears. So we overfilled it just a little bit. We didn't go to the exact degree for the transmission itself. You want it to warm up to 40 degrees. We just did it around 20. It's gonna be about 500 mil to 700 mil overfilled. So after filling the transmission and letting the vehicle come up to temperature, we're gonna take it for a quick drive just to ensure that it's engaging all eight gears. This will also ensure that the mechatronic gets bled. So don't be surprised if for the first few gear shifts, it's acting a little bit abnormal as it adapts to the new fluid and level. So after we take it around the block, just to confirm that it's engaging all eight gears, Taylor drove it around for about 100 kilometers just to have it adapt. Afterwards, we flashed XHP with a little bit of a spicy tune. After running through the adaption procedure, which is driving it for 50 kilometers at various speeds in various drive modes, we ended up testing it through a few gear pull. Hope you guys have stuck through it and enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And as always, take care and we'll see you on the next one.